and welcome to the University of Turku's uh, YouTube channel. I am Noor from Jordan and I'm a master's student here at the university. Today we have two lovely guests from the admission services. Hello everyone, um, I'm Johanna. Uh, I'm from the admission services at the university. I'm here joined by my colleague. Hi, I'm Valtteri, also from the admission services. We are here today to answer some of our questions about the application and admission process. Thank you guys for your time today. Thank you. It's January, that means it's already application period in Finland. Yeah, um, at the University of Turku we have a two-week application time, uh, it's always in January for studies that start in August, September of that particular year. And it's a joint application with other universities in Finland as well. Do you have any intake for other periods of the year or is it just once a year and it starts always on August, September? This uh, application period that we currently have in January uh, is for the International Master's Degree Program that we have at the university. So that means uh, degree programs that are taught in English. And the joint application means that there are a uh, a lot of Finnish universities that take part in the same application period using the same application form and using the same application portal study info.fi. It's also a good place to find information about anything that is taught in Finland. Mm -hmm. So you have all of the programs uh, in all Finnish universities, so it's a very good portal for that to look for information on where you actually want to apply to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so be sure to check out studyinfo.fi. Yep. So now I want to like slowly walk through the application after you guys get it through the mm -hmm. study info portal. On the admin side. Can you walk us through how you evaluate an application? What we do is generally check that the application is there, a person has applied and that they have actually um, included the attachments for example, but then what we do is we start with checking the language proficiency of that person. So have they proven their English language skills in the way that we require? Mm -hmm. Because that's something that um, is the first step in our evaluation process. If someone does not fulfill the language requirements, uh, then the application will directly be rejected, mm -hmm. they cannot be admitted to the university. If they have, then we'll check uh, basically if they have um, attached all what we require, so the um, transcript of records and the degree certificate, um, a copy of their passport um, or other valid ID, um, and then we take a look at if they are there, basically, yes. and, and if they are valid and, um, and um, real documents. So that's what we do. Okay, so you checked the authenticity also of the documents, yes. so not just the... Yeah. Don't fake anything. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, don't, don't even talk about that. <laughs> for many reasons. Yeah. yeah, for many reasons, that's not a good idea. But yes, we, we also check the authenticity of the okay. documents. Uh, does nationality or age or the gap between when they last graduated and the time they're applying, does it affect admission? Uh, no. <laughs> very very clear answer, no. no. Um, we don't take any of that into consideration. So basically, anyone from any any background, uh, any nationality, any age can apply. That makes no difference in, in our admission. If there's a very long gap in your um, studies so you've done your bachelor's 20 years ago and now you're thinking of doing a master's that's perfectly fine we are happy to have you uh, but it's a good idea when you're writing your motivation letter to maybe detail a little bit on why you had the gap and why you decided now to continue with mm -hmm. your studies because when um, the academics are doing the evaluation of the motivation letter they may want to know why you've been doing something else in the yeah. in the middle but basically it makes no difference on whether you would be admitted or not it's just more information for the evaluators uh, so you, you mentioned now that people other than you evaluate the motivational letters can you tell us what happens after you guys filter out the, the applications? Well, then they sort of move to the uh, faculties and the departments for their academic evaluation. So mm -hmm. then they go through the motivation letter and whatever it is that the program specifically asked for in, in, the, in their application form. So for anything that's kind of specific to the program that, that would need the scientific background mm -hmm. that the applicant has would be evaluated by the program? Yes, the exactly. Yes. Okay. Well, if people have any questions regarding that, they should also contact the faculty they're interested in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or the program directly. Yeah. That would yeah. be, be the best best choice because every program has their own specific requirements mm -hmm. on what kind of evaluation they do with the documents because that also differs on program to program basis. So mm -hmm. in some of our programs, they look very detailed on the also the grades of the of the previous degree. In others, they are more interested in the content mm -hmm. on what you've actually done rather than what the grades are. Mm -hmm. And in some, they just have a look at okay, the background degree looks good, but we focus more on the motivation letter on possible interview mm -hmm. and make the decision based on that. So it really depends very much. So it's very good for all the applicants to make sure that they check all of the information on the program page about what is the actual uh, requirements for that particular program. Mm -hmm. So contact your program. What are some of the most common mistakes that uh, you've seen throughout the years? The most common mistake, I guess, would be that the applicant clearly hasn't read the instructions. Mm -hmm. So they might not even really understand what program they are applying to. So for example, their answers on their motivational letters, for example, is something that is 
not for that program. So they're clearly answering the, answering the question without really understanding what the program is actually looking for. Mm-hmm. Their uh, educational documents are, for example, copies that have not been verified. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And also translations, yeah. um, so that uh, we are very particular on the, what kind of translations are accepted. So um, if the degree documents are not in English, Finnish or Swedish, but for this audience mainly <laughs> English would be valid, then they need to be translated into English. Um, and the translation has to be done either by a, an official translator, so that has to be someone who is in that country, um, has the right to translate official documents, and it has to be stamped and everything by the translator, um, or then it has to be given by the awarding institution. But um, in some cases, the applicants um, don't provide the translations, or the translations are done by someone who is not an official translator, um, and of course we can't accept that, and mm-hmm. that would then mean that the person would be rejected because they didn't provide the documents we need. Mm-hmm. I want to talk a little bit about the motivational letter. What is it that the University of Turku looks for in an applicant? I think you should first of all read the instructions, <laughs> read the questions, because there's always like guiding questions mm-hmm. on the application form, what the actual program is looking for in that motivational letter. Then you could do like a background check on the program. So. Try and write the motivation letter uh, specifically to that program. So find out what that program is about. What is the, what is the research focus, for example, and how does your background, uh, for example, relate to that? How does that uh, make you uh, a good applicant mm-hmm. for that program? Then also state your actual motivations. Why are you applying? And why are you applying to this program? Why are you applying to Turku? What is it that you're interested in the University of Turku? And what are your future plans? Mm-hmm. How would the degree from the University of Turku help in your future plans? We are not looking for generic uh, motivation letters that detail the person's background and their childhood and all kinds of things like mm-hmm. this. Make sure that you know where you are applying to because I think that's one of the major problems programs have had with with the uh, motivation letters is that the person applying doesn't necessarily seem to know where they are applying and why they are applying to that program and that kind of an applicant is not maybe the best one because of course uh, we want to make sure that we know, we admit the people who actually get the best out of this degree mm. from, from our university and have a reason to be here. Mm. Do you have any advice for the applicants for the questions that ask them to evaluate themselves and the suitability of their degree? Yeah, uh, well, first of all, you can check the program's pages for what kind of a background they are looking for in their applicants. They All, all of them have some kind of list, for example, there that like these are the relevant backgrounds that applicants should have mm. for, for this program. You can also go through our a study guide which is freely available on the internet, publicly available, so you can see the actual course information, what is taught in each program. So you can go through that information and see what are the actual skills that they are looking for, what is included in that degree when you come and study here. And then you can use that information, for example, already in your motivational mm-hmm. letters. Yeah, because the name of the degree doesn't necessarily give yeah. you That's that true. much information, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, but rather having a look what they actually teach and then seeing if you have done something that is relevant, would you understand what is being taught mm-hmm. in those courses? Is there any strict criteria for the amount of like work or research experience for the programs that require it? It's um, important to think of what you've actually done in your um, previous degree, for example. If you are just graduated and you haven't had any work experience, think of what you did in your degree. Mm-hmm. Did you actually work in a lab, for example, if it's that kind of a program you're applying to? Or did you have an internship in a company, if it's that kind of um, program? Anything that you've done during a degree could be valid mm-hmm. because it's, it's what kind of skills did you learn so it, all of that will be taken into consideration so being a recent graduate does not hinder you from being admitted to a program that requires some kind of background um, and previous experience but you have to be able to show that experience um, for for that that program in your motivation letter or in the, in the in possible interview don't put yourself down don't yeah. discourage yourself believe in yourself so the, the admission results always depends on the other applicants. That's there true. may be a lot of other applicants who are also not that experienced mm-hmm. and then then we, we're still going to admit them because we're always going to admit some. Yes. So it's not always that everyone has a huge experience background and everything. It's not like that at all. So every year we admit applicants who have not graduated yet mm-hmm. from their bachelor's. So you can apply even if your degree is incomplete and you might easily get admitted. And the same goes for anyone with that m- not that much research background, for example. Mm-hmm. So you might still get admitted. It all really depends on the year and on the other applicants and so on. So just send in your application. Send in you, you have a chance. <laughs> yes.
I do want to ask one more thing. Uh, from my experience here, I've noticed that Finland values things differently when it comes to how much they put weight on grades of, of their students. Um, what would you like to say to people who are hesitant to apply because their grades are not that good? Um, please do apply. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it does depend very much also on the program on how much they even look at the grades. In many cases, they just look at what you've studied, mm -hmm. the content of the studies, rather than the actual grades. The grades may not be that important in the admission process. And again, as Svalter said, it also depends on, on the other applicants. So, so um, not having the very top grades would not be a problem because the whole evaluation is also based on many things. It's not just based on grades. It's not just based on a motivation letter. It's not just based on whatever. It's based on all of these together. So if you are doing not so well in one part of the, of the evaluation, you could be doing very well in another. Mm -hmm. And that means that it would be admitted. Yes. Uh, do you have any general tips for the applicants or any final words? Well, I don't think we've emphasized um, enough, or maybe we already have. Read all of the instructions. <laughs> 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 so, so make sure that you do the research. Um, first of all, of course, do the research on is this university what you want? Is this program what you want? Is this something that will help you in your future? And if these happen, then have a look at what is actually required, what you need to do, what kind of documentation you need to have, and make sure you have everything ready well in advance before mm. the application period. Mm -hmm. But don't leave it until the last yeah. day. So send it in well in advance. So if you run into any, for example, technical problems, then you'll still have a chance to apply later. You can yeah. fix those technical problems and get that mm -hmm. uh, application form sent in. Yeah. Because if, 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 if you're in the last minute sending in your application and your internet crashes down, then you have lost your chance because we do not accept late applications. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Valtteri, for thank your time you. today. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video. And uh, good luck! <laughs>